Thank you for being here with us today. What would you see as the greatest barrier for eradicating world poverty? There are two big challenges in the world today. One is the challenge of climate change. It's impacting poor people directly and hurting their ability to rise from poverty. And the second is this rising extreme inequality that's also trapping millions in poverty. We need to tackle both. So what role would you say that wealth inequality has? A huge one, because we know that the reason that poor people remain trapped in poverty is that a few at the top have managed to capture public voice and have made the rules work in their favor. So business gives value to the few at the top and cheats those at the bottom. And governments have colluded and allow this to happen. So we must tackle extreme inequality if we are to give everybody a chance to rise from poverty. Uh, you've spoken about government changing policy, tax reform, and Oxfam identifies as a nonpartisan charitable organization. Do you see these messages of political nature as a new direction for Oxfam? It's not a new direction for us always. Oxfam was founded to tackle the root causes of injustice in the world. We were founded in the UK at the, in the middle of the Second World War, and the founders were challenging the government of Winston Churchill on their right to deliver food and assistance to those who were on the side of Hitler, to civilians who were starving. That is the history of Oxfam. So we've always tackled root causes, and we know that the root causes lie in the politics. So yes, we tackle politics, but in a nonpartisan way. We need to design a 21st century economy that works for those in poverty, rather than trying to integrate them into an economy designed for and by those primarily mm. already with capital. Mm. What would you say to suggestions that this is impractical? It is practical. It is possible. It has not always been like that. Business doesn't have to cheat ordinary people for it to be profitable. You can have profitable businesses that reward everybody who contributes fairly and that return to the environment and restore the environment. And Oxfam works with such businesses. For example, we have been part of creating many cooperatives around the world. And cooperatives share value with those who are, to, with farmers, for example, smallholder farmers, with workers in industry, and also the rich at the top take some profit. So we can have many different business models that are fair, that share value more fairly. So it's not impractical. We challenge the cynicism in society that makes us want, that wants us to believe that the global economy was always like this. No, I give you an example of how shareholder capitalism has grown in the world. 1970 companies in the UK, shareholders were taking only 10% of profits. Today they take 70% of the profits, leaving so little for increasing workers' wages, paying suppliers fair share for their products. We have to change this, and it is changeable. People argue poverty and inequality are an, in, are an inevitable effect of technological processes and globalization. What would you say to this? Again, technology is not neutral. Technology can be used to advance humanity, to make lives better, to give dignity to all people. And technology can be used to exclude, to destroy jobs, and to, to benefit the owners of technology. We have to decide. Governments have to play an important role in regulating technology. And there are many ways to do this. And it already happens in some sectors. For example, we don't allow technology to, to people are opposing fracking, for example. They are saying we don't want our environment damaged even though the technology is there. So te certain purposes of technology are regulated. Technolo governments have a regulatory role, but governments also can share. In France, for example, the French government invests in the technological industries, and that way shapes 
how technology is used in society and its impact on society and on the environment. What we don't want to see is the owners of technology, wealthy people, capturing politics and making the political process deliver for them and not for poor people. Taking the example of the women in the garment factories, what role do you think women need to play for the eradication of world poverty? Women are really make up the majority of smallholder farmers in the world, for example. And smallholder farmers feed us, they are tested, they are the ones who really feed most of the people in the world. Big, uh, big farming, agribusiness also supports our food needs, but smallholder farmers sustain the majority of people, but yet they are cheated. Women in Africa and Asia, two thirds of them are working in informal sector. The informal sector, they have no rights, no guarantee of incomes. They have the most miserable jobs with the hazards of work that they face. And this could change. This could change for them, give them a better, better work conditions, better incomes, and that would also drive the global economy. Women also do a lot of care work. The work of caring for families, caring for the sick, the elderly, the children, falls mostly on women. This denies them the opportunity to raise incomes in the economy. That also must change. We want to see governments put more money in childcare, in public transportation, and businesses also being flexible about how they employ women, giving them an opportunity to balance family and, and, and work. These policy changes in business and, and by governments can result in women being rewarded and being included in a global economy. Okay, thank you very much for being with us today.